All right. Well, welcome. My name's Nick Calum. I am the children. I'm the children's pastor at a church in Tacoma. It's called Life Center. Um, been there now like 16 years or so, 15 years or so. Um, I'm not great with math. So I started there at two th- in 2002, but we had interned there for a year and a half before that. So whatever that math comes to, that's how long I've been there. And when I started as the children's pastor there, I was not married, had no children, and it kind of expected, had, I had this idea that all these parents who were bringing their kids to, um, to be in our care, they're like, they were coming to me for like these, you know, great parenting ideas. And uh, fast forward to now, we have uh, five boys, and now I have something to say. <laughs> I, I guess, actually, this is my wife, Stacy, right back there. And that is Ryler, who is like two and a half months old now. There's some seats up here at the front if you guys would like. But I, I um, eventually came to the realization that um, I might work with kids, but I'm not necessarily someone who has um, all the best parenting advice. My role is to be a spiritual leader for children and for, the, for families. So I, I learned that um, for, to be the most benefit to the families that I serve, I'm going to come from a, a spiritual angle. Like, what does the Holy Spirit have to say about this? And if they wanted to come talk to me about their kiddos, um, uh, just behavior issues and, you know, uh, they're getting, they can't get along with their siblings or they're getting bullied at school or, you know, all these different things. Like, I, I will help, but I'm always going to turn this back to Jesus. I want to, I want to, uh, my, my greatest um, benefit to the families will be um, to offer spiritual guidance. And then um, I was... Uh, with a, our, a children's pastor uh, that we had at the time at one of our other campuses, and we were um, doing some prayer time and kind of some soul-searching time, and uh, we were going to plan, bu- plan out a bunch of curriculum. And the, the evening of our first uh, time together, we were going to spend a couple days together, a couple nights. Uh, like our, our agenda kind of just got thrown out the window, and I feel like God just kind of downloaded, and Holy Spirit just kind of, download a bunch of stuff about how we can help parents be the spiritual leaders of um, their own children. So this crowd here, this first statement should be normative. It should be a normal thing for us to, for us to think. So we'll just say it so that we can just move on, okay? Uh, the church is not the primary spiritual influencer of the children, of, of kids. Is that a new thought to anybody? Okay, great. We're going to start off. We're, this whole thing is going to come from that perspective that really it's the parents and we can never take their place. Um, um, I don't, we need to talk about this for a long time just because it's, it, I believe and I feel like it's, what our, it's all of our thinking that, that the, the influence that, a child, that the, the parent has over their child, we can never outdo no matter how fast or we talk or how great the lesson is or how great the event was, the influence that we have will never supersede the influence of the parent, okay? So we have to start there. And um, so in that time that I had with, um, with JP and our, that other children's pastor, we, we were thinking, or God, God just kind of downloaded these principles, the ideas... Um, a, a, a framework to think about how we can equip the parents to be better spiritual leaders for their kids. Or, um, maybe not better, but more um, intentional about their spiritual leadership for their kids. And uh, we started off, and it was like a lot, there was like, oh, we could just teach them to do this one thing. And, and if they could just do that thing, then it's going to be great. And it, the conversation evolved to like, um, not so to do's, but kind of how to think. Um, and it, 
the idea came across like these are we want to we want to set up principles rather than practices a principle and there's some variation uh, would be kind of like a roadway or the, the principle would kind of be like a, a roadway and a, a practice would be like a railway a railway so like a the thing that a train goes on right uh, trains um, have only one destination you know they can only follow this one spot really difficult to turn a train <coughs> off the rail right uh, so it's rigid it requires no interpretation really for the engineer you have point a to start at and you end at where the rail stops point b um, and really it's not adjustable um, however a roadway when you are the driver of a car you're constantly making course corrections if you miss a turn um, because you weren't paying attention to the navigation thing or whatever like okay I'm gonna be rerouted I know how I can I can turn this way or that way there's flexibility there um, you you know um, you have the ability to in a in a moment of danger to adjust in this in a split second when you, you're driving your car um, so there's the ability there um, in principles to be able to adjust to be flexible to course correct so um, that's why these I, that's why I feel like some spiritual parenting principles rather than spiritual parenting practices are way more helpful for families because families require a lot of adaptability families uh, with just one kid let alone five children or multiple children um, requires the ability for the parent to be able to uh, adjust to be flexible um, at least that's been in our experience raising our own kids because yeah uh, lots of kids makes for lots of fun and chaos <laughs> and um, wow, laughs right. yeah absolutely and uh, tears <laughs> and um, everything in between right, right? Um, so we've been using these ever since that moment there um, that that weekend uh, we've been using these principles for spiritual parenting in, in varying ways they've shown up in different ways and we can kind of talk about uh, how we've used them later on because I just want to cover these quickly um, if you look that front page there it just has a lot of blanks the second page is is a document or the second and third page is there two pages yes. front and back that's the kind of the the, the, the main document that um, was written out of our time out of this discovery that we did and so anything that you're gonna hear me say actually is just getting lifted right out of this this writing there so I could just stop talking now and you guys could just read it and you'll be just as far along uh, but I think I got a little bit more passionate about it than what you could probably read off the page right and it's t it's due for editing because um, there's some things that we'll probably want to adjust now but the we um, Let's just dive right in. Five parenting, five spiritual parenting principles that we've put in front of uh, parents. The first one is authentic faith. Um, the parent, if they're going to be a uh, positive influence, spiritual influence for their kid, has to come out of an authentic faith of their own. Um, this this one out, out of all the five there there's really no prioritization this isn't like a sequential thing other than it has to start here with authentic faith um, sometimes we'll we'll talk about um, if you go to a, a car lot looking to buy a car a new car or whatever and um, well tell me tell me about what you think about this if you if you're asking the, the salesman Oh, this is, yeah, this is a great car. Yeah, you should buy this car. W have you driven it? No, I only drive the other brand over here. It's like, okay, well, I'm not going to really trust that you really, like, I'm only going to drive the Volkswagen because the, the, you know, whatever, whatever, isn't not my thing. Like, well, let me believe that you believe in what you're selling. It has to be authentic down in your, in your core. Otherwise, it will come across as a take it or leave it thing. So when we talk about faith, if the, if the parent is um, wishy-washy about faith the kid it's then communicated to the child this is kind of a take it or leave it kind of thing 
So an authentic faith is core and central to uh, a, a spiritual leadership for their kids. Okay, so uh, leadership could be uh, in both directions, though, couldn't it? You could be leading in a positive way towards Jesus, or you could be leading in a negative way away from Jesus. I, I consider it positive towards Jesus, negative uh, away from Jesus. Um, I assume everybody else here in the room believes that. Um, that was that was a joke. That was a joke. Okay, okay. <laughs> like no chuckle than a, a, a small like <laughs> in the front row. Um, so there is spiritual leadership. Every uh, every parent leads spiritually, right? Whether they are uh, drunk ninety percent of the time, or they're speaking in tongues ninety percent of the time, Wh- wherever their faith journey is, they are leading spiritually. And if we uh, want to help equip parents that we have influence over to lead their kids positively towards Jesus, we want to encourage them. They have to make this faith authentic to themselves. It's the, of this list, it's the top priority. And um, for their kids to find Jesus in a real way, it's the top priority. Uh, Secondly, uh, is attentive um, if you look on the little handout there, we have these little icons that we came up with that we picked out of clip art. Um, we're a lot better now, but we haven't changed the document. So, uh, again, another joke and nothing. Um, yeah, I'll give you. Yeah, I'll give you. Okay, here, a joke's coming. We're a lot better now. Um, uh, being attentive. Okay, so as you know, if you are a parent, chaos ensues generally with schedules and getting people out the door on time, and, and um, this is what you have to look forward to. Yeah. Um, and just like there's so many things going on sometimes that we lose the attentiveness to what's truly going on in the life of our child. And so that's why we've, we've, risen, we've raised this, uh, uh, the necessity, the, the necessity to be listening, not just to the words that are being spoken of, oh yeah, it's good, to listening to the meaning behind what's being said. Uh, not just to listening to the words, but f- um, having the ability to see what's, um, what's going on in their life that's not being spoken, right? How they're reacting. Um, w- in, uh, our, our family is very busy. Lots of things going on. Um, weekends are, are not restful as many other children that we see and, and you know, families that we are around. You know, they get, they're resting on the weekend and we are c- continuing the busyness. And so a lot of times we will just see that our kids are running ragged. And so um, being attentive to that, that there is a um, lifestyle um, <coughs> side of that. Like we need to make sure that we're planning in more rest, but there's also a spiritual side of that. How is this? How is this wearing down my child's soul when we're run, when when we're running, and thus they have to run around? And you know, uh, how is this impacting their heart? Um, uh, as the the spiritual parent needs to take a, a, a you know kind of a thermometer test and see what's what's the temperature of the uh, household as a whole are we are do we have joy as a um, characteristic of our of our household but there's also the the necessity we have to make sure that we're taking that temperature also for the individual the individual child that would be that other uh, blank there for the household and for the individual because every kid as it has been, as we've learned in our family with our boys, that every kid reacts differently. And if I stand back and just see the general feeling in the family is this, I have to also make sure that each kiddo is reacting in their own way, have to, having to be uh, acutely attentive <coughs> to their own, um, their own needs, their own um, heart temperature, right? Um, let me read, let me uh, look over here. Uh, things that we can be attentive to. 
what about uh, the spiritual fr fruit of our children? Galatians lists those things very well. Love and joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Um, what about the attentiveness to how my kids are um, leading their own peers? Well, what are their relationships like? Are they strained right now? Because there's a spiritual way I get to help engage that kid. Um, uh, didn't have been recently aware of how a child might be influenced by um, governmental changes and the words that adults will speak about the results of this or re the results of that or this person's character or uh, what happened in the world over there or this um, 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 catastrophe or, or um, terrorist attack somewhere locally around the world because our, our world is pretty small now and we have access to we know within minutes of what something happened around the world um, and our kids are in, are affected by this and um, I think that when you know fear sets in because they're reacting to a to a um, natural disaster or they're reacting to a an attack of some kind I think that's a spiritual issue that we can um, that we need to address how are my kids individually reacting to news and uh, what they're seeing and hearing? Um, in our family, we have, if, if the TV's on, it's probably Mariners baseball. Um, and so we have very, we, we don't have a lot of um, um, news influence that the kids are seeing. But, man, I, for some reason, I couldn't turn off the, uh, the election results. I was so intrigued by like the numbers, like each state has this and that, you know, I didn't pay attention in seventh grade social studies, so like <laughs> electoral votes, that's still kind of intriguing to me, and like this county does this and that, and so I was like kind of intrigued by it, and, like, and, and thus the kids were like kind of hanging around, and uh, they're hearing people being described as different things, and like if, the, if this person has the, uh, the potential to become our president, um, what are they hearing that's going to now affect everything about how they see them for forever, really? So having to be uh, aware of that, attentive to what they're hearing, but really how they're reacting to it. I think it's an important thing. So attentiveness. Um, there's a couple, there's, that's a lot of stuff in there. There's, this, there's the spiritual side of the spiritual fruit side of thing, but also uh, what's going on in their world that we need to be um, attentive to. The third one, the third sp uh, parenting principle uh, would be leadership. This one, um, the, the typical um, phrase would be like, if you want your kid to, to know how to swim, you uh, take them to swimming lessons. If you, want them to, um, if you want them to play soccer, you sign them up for the, the soccer team. And if you, want them to love to Je if you want them to love Jesus, you take them to church. And we know that that is an inaccurate statement when we do this teaching and we do this uh, help parents along, we need to have them understand the principle that you are the leader for these kids. We know that uh, you are leading in your family when Jesus becomes a priority for your family. We know that you are leading uh, your kids spiritually when uh, Jesus is a part of your like dinner table conversation and, and the common life, you know, Deuteronomy talks about that, you know, you know, talk about them when you're on the road and put scripture on your door frames and tie it to your head, these weird things, like, why would you, why would you bind it to your forehead, but whatever, I don't understand the cultural relevance of that, I should probably study that, um, um, we know that you're leading when you engage your child in, a, in spiritual conversation, that idea right there may be very intimidating to parents who say, I don't have a college degree. I just started following Jesus last month, and I really think this is important for my kids, but I'm no expert. I, I, have, so many, I have too many questions of my own to then try to explain something to kids. And this is where um, this, this spiritual leadership thing people then will back away from. 
because I'm not qualified to do that. My, I didn't have a spiritually leading parent as an example for me, and so I don't know what, even what to do. Where do I even start? Um, so we, we put this in here, this little phrase. Spiritual parenting does not require you to be a perfect parent, but it does require you to allow God to lead you as you lead your children towards his kingdom. Allow God to lead you as you lead his, uh, as you lead the children. So this quote, um, uh, consider this quote. It's from Michelle Anthony from the book Spiritual Awakening, Awakening for Today's Families. I parent in a way that does not simply spend my hours, but also allows me to invest my days towards eternity. Not just spending the hours going through them, but investing them towards something great, something grand, the kingdom of God towards eternity. We're going to, um, that's in, that, that's in the, the reading there or in the, the, the packet. Um, when we get through all five of these things, I want to come back and I want to see what your guys' reaction is to that um, idea there. Okay. Um, let's move on. Discipline. Uh, when we've done this, like as a little course for parents before, I had a lot of parents really excited about the discipline thing because they went, okay, good. This is when we talked about how do I get my kids to start doing the right thing? Like, yes, the discipline talk, you know, week four, it should have been week one. Here we go. Um, and I, I had to like pump everybody's brakes and be like, hold on. This isn't like, this isn't the behavior modification talk. This is the spiritual disciplines talk. This is how can you as a parent help your child discipline themselves to love loving Jesus, uh, love loving Jesus. That's, that's intentional to, to fall in love with loving Jesus. Right. Um, so we're, we're so quick to jump to behavior, but this isn't about ma- behavior modification. A, a, uh, a normal thought here. The, the more attention ought to be given to the heart rather than to the behavior. So th- this, uh, um, uh, a pastor would probably say, spiritual leader would probably say um, that the heart is always more of the issue, right? So parents who are concerned about the behavior of their kid, um, in, in, from my perspective, I always want to turn it back to, so let's see what's going on in the heart, right? Um, because when the heart has um, uh, fears that are gripping, the natural reaction is to lash out because of those fears. And when the heart is full of anger, the natural the, the reaction would be to lash out in in the in the anger or or to sin in the anger. Not saying that the anger is bad. I think that's in the scripture, right? Somebody don't sin in your anger. Um, not saying that fear is bad. It is a part of life. But when it's gripping and when it's over when it overcomes, um, it ca- it can cause us to do things that are, are and especially in children when we're so responsive. So I want to see, I want to direct things towards the heart. And I know, I know, I know, I know that there are spiritual disciplines that help nurture a heart more like Jesus so that our natural reactions are more like Jesus. So uh, spiritual disciplines would be what? Um, uh, responses from the audience. Spiritual disciplines would be things like what? Things that we can do. Uh, I'll start, Yeah. Prayer, great. Prayer, a discipline of prayer that is modeled, and then we lead our kids to develop. Right? I have another one over here that I fasting. Yes, um, and not necessarily just food. Fasting, like giving up of something to dedicate that time, or as a sacrifice to show your your priority to another thing, to to Jesus. Another. Devotion, yeah, something that a time dedicated to studying God's word that you're devoted to, right? Worship, Worship, yes. And that's beyond just singing songs. Mm -hmm. How are you going to communicate to uh, God your love for him? Yeah, artwork is worship, you know, all these different things. Other other thoughts? Scripture memorization, Mm -hmm. it's a spiritual discipline. Um, Yeah, there's a lot of homework. Our kids seem to take, bring home a lot a lot of homework. Um, thankfully, a part of their homework for our kids is actually spirit, uh, scripture memorization. They attend a, a faith-based Christian school. So it's kind of cool that they, part of their 
weekly testing is to say a Bible verse. That's really great. But that's a minority of kids, right? So let's put that, let's put that discipline in place in the home and make that, a, make that a, a, dis, a, a discipline for the kids. Okay, other thoughts about uh, spiritual discipline? Thankfulness. Thankfulness. Ah, gratitude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, and, I just, and I just think that would help fend off some... Um, I don't know, what's the word I'm looking at? I'm, I'm saying, I'm thinking greediness, but I know that's not quite the word that I want to say. Entitlement, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah having a gratitude, a, a growing gratitude, a thankfulness for um, what they have, who they are. Um, that was kind of a half hand, half raised hand? No, okay, well, let's go on to the next one then, <laughs> because um, we are done here at, in 15 minutes, is that right? I think so. Okay, so the last one then is speak truth. Um, this is the one where I get the most weepy over. So if I start to cry, <laughs> apologize. Again, a little warning. A little, instead of the jokes, I'm going to prep you. This is the one where it just kind of gets me going because the words that get spoken over our kids are so powerful. So powerful. Um, I, I'm a huge Pixar animation fan, and you knew it was coming. If you, yeah, Dan's like, yeah, we knew it was coming. Um, okay, so in Toy Story 3, has anyone here not seen the movie Toy Story 3? Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spoil the movie for you. Do you intend on seeing it anytime soon? You do not. Okay, so spoiler alert. There's a moment at the end of the movie where the, uh, the little boy in the movie, he's, or in the other two movies, the first two, he's now grown up. He's moving off to college, right? His name is Andy. And he's donating his toys, his cherished possessions, the ones that he had spent so much time playing with and, and, and making their personalities. And he gave them their voice and all this and that. He is now entrusting them to this other little girl named Bonnie. And he's, he, he, gives her, he gives her the box of these toys of, of Buzz Lightyear and, and Rex the dinosaur and and Ham, the piggy bank, and the potato head, Mr. and Mrs., right? Okay, so there's this moment where he, he takes them and he pulls them out one at a time. He says, this is Jesse, the rootinest, tootinest cowboy. Or no, that's cowgirl. cowgirl, yeah, excuse me. And he explains to Bonnie who this is. He pulls out, this is Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head, they're madly in love with each other. And, la, la, la. and this is Rex. He's so fierce. Rawr! You know, and does this whole thing. And he gets down to where he's about to, um, Bonnie looks into the box and he, he, uh, she sees Woody. So she had previously, I'm, I'm ruining the whole movie for you, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> she had previously played with Woody on accident, right? Okay, so, and he's like, no, you can't have, you can't have this one. This is his favorite toy, right? And he looks at it and he goes, okay, well, this is Woody, the most loyal friend. I'm going to cry. The most loyal friend I've ever had. You know, and he, and he, he, he describes this little Sheriff Woody action figure, not, not doll. I almost said doll. Yeah. Okay. So, so I'm, I watch this and when I'm, I'm in the theater and I'm just like choking up. And then it dawned on me. This is what parents do. A parent spends so much time giving their child their voice, nurturing them, playing with them, yes. And then there comes a point where they then introduce this child to their new world. They're going to go off to college or they're entering high school or they're, you know, whatever it might be. There's all kinds of moments where a new part of the world is getting introduced to them. And, and Woody, or excuse me, Andy, had he just given the box and walked away, Bonnie, the little new little girl, then... Um, gives them new personalities, new voices, new ways to be played with, and it, cause, it would cause those toys. Now, I'm, I know this is, it's, they're not actually real. I understand that toys are not actually real, but it, in, a, in, in, that, in this Toy Story world, it would have caused, what, personality disorder almost for, these play, for the play toys. I don't want, I don't want my kids to be redefined by w- what the world will now say about them. So I have the opportunity and I have the mandate as a spiritual leading parent to, to redefine the world 
and, t- and make sure my, my kid knows who they are in this new world. Um, in the packet, and we'll, we'll skip the Toy Story talk for, or we'll, we'll cut that off because I could go on more and more about that. But uh, in the pamphlet there, you'll see um, this idea, speaking truth, speaking God's word over them, absolutely, praying God's word over them, absolutely. Um, 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 g- hearing from God about, your, about the children, we have to do that. Um, but there's also this idea of like, you know, here's this world that wants to redefine who they are. So we, we discovered that kind of like three, three words or three ways that this parents tend to, to handle this situation. You can ig- just totally ignore it. That's the first blank. It's an I there. Ignore. You can ignore that the fact that the world is out there ready to redefine. Or, um, and I'm, you know, I'm painting the world like it's this horrible, horrible place. Because it is. But... Um, <laughs> um, but uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of confusion and chaos that I, I want to help my kids their way through. So I can ignore the fact that it's even out there and just let my, kind of like have my kids be, it, discover it for themselves and, hey, I hope it works out okay for you, son. Um, and I know that there are parents who have done that. You know, whatever. They're going to be fine. I'll just ignore it. There's a, second, I, there's a second concept or second approach would be isolation. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, make sure that my kids don't hear anything. And that's probably how Stacy and I have approached the whole news thing. We really don't have it on in the house. And, and we, we've thought, of like, maybe we're not giving them enough introduction in a safe environment of our home. Uh, but there is that isolation idea. Um, and... Uh, this this can kind of be in 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 I guess in many conservative families. I'm going to make sure that my kid doesn't listen to the wrong music, doesn't watch the wrong movies, doesn't have the wrong friends, and la la la. And I'm going to only have this this little world will exist for my kid for as long as I can keep them inside of it. The issue with that is they're going to reach an age where they will step outside of your little world, and when they're wherever bubble the bubble pops and Hello, new world. Look at all this stuff that's out there. I'm going to go figure out what it's all about. And that can be a dangerous road to lead. So um, that isolation thing has its place, has its, um, especially for, uh, I, I feel like, especially for young, young, young children, that's a very important thing to do. But that isolation has to grow as the child grows, right? Um, so I don't know if that's the perfect approach. Um, and now, nor do I know that this next one that we're talking about, so we had ig- ig- ignore, isolate, and this next one is insulate. Uh, I don't know that this is perfect either, but it's, it makes sense to me. I want to insulate my child's heart and mind. You get insulation uh, inside walls and buildings and in attics and spaces, you know, crawl spaces and stuff. There's insulation put in there to protect against the harsh heats and the cold winters, you know. Uh, that's, if I think of, if I, if I acknowledge the fact that there are some harshness in the world and there's some, there's some bitterness in the world, um, I don't necessarily mean bitterness as like the one like bitterness thing, but like there's just things out there that can do damage to my kids. Um, ins- insulating their heart as protection against us. And yes, it's, it exists. Yes, son, child, it, it exists. Here's how you, you can uh, react. Here's how you can approach. This is how you can think about this. So um, I had a conversation with my kids yesterday, two of the, two of the oldest boys. Uh, in, in, reaction to, um, uh, in reaction to the reaction of the current or the re- most recent election, um, man, I didn't realize that there was so much on just wow again i don't watch the news so i don't know um but like wow there's a lot of tension about what's unknown and what's gonna happen you know whatever so i pulled the two oldest boys out of school i work right there on their school campus it really is helpful pulled them out individually and said you know what i'm finding out that there's a lot of division it could be right here within our school with your friends and and um 
son, I, I want to make sure that we are people of, that bring unity. And they're like, yeah, okay. Well, I didn't say anything. It's like, I don't, whether you said anything, like, they think they, they're a natural reaction. Well, I'm getting in trouble. Like, whether, whether you said anything or not. But I, want, I provided that reference, that insulation. Like, here's, here's how we're going to approach this. We're going to be people who bring unity to disunity and, and fear and, and chaos. And, um, so just keep that in mind about what happens in the next coming days or the conversations you hear that um, adults are having or your, your peers here at school are, are saying. My dad said this about that and my mom thinks this about that. It's like, okay, those, those, you're going to hear these things. Just, rem- just keep in mind, we're going to be people of unity as we approach and as we go through this thing. That's, that's kind of the insulation thing that I'm, that I'm thinking about. So those, those are the five things. Authentic faith, attentiveness, leadership, discipline, and speaking truth. You can, um, you can read about those in detail. Well, not too much detail. It's not that detailed. But you can read about those there in that thing. You can steal this. You can use it. You can apply it. You can give it to um, other families. You can do whatever you want with it, okay? Just make sure that my name's attached to it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's also a joke. Okay, uh, we have a few moments left. Perfect. Five minutes. I wanted to have more. Uh, one thing I wanted to hear from you about, what does that one quote do to you in your mind? That quote about, I don't spend my days. Let me see if I can find it real quick. I, I parent in a way that does not simply spend my hours, but allows me to invest my days toward eternity. What a great quote. <coughs> Thoughts on that? Reactions to that? Yep. Well, one thing that I uh, that reminds me of, and I've tried to do um, as a parent, um, is to develop routines within our family life that bring good things. And I think of it in terms of uh, if if I had my kids brush their teeth every time I felt like it was good for them to brush them, they might brush them a couple times a month. <laughs> but we brush teeth every day because yep. that's what we do. And, yep. and as I look back to prayer and even thankfulness and reading scripture, like a lot of times it doesn't feel real special but it's routine and sometimes it does feel real special but it only happened because it was part of our family rhythm. Yeah, that's great. Love that. Yeah. I'm going to try to if it, it makes me think of like, you know, as I minister to kids and families and I'm young and so I I think about it, I'm not ministering to the person, I'm ministering to the person they're going to be. Oh, that's fantastic. And so like I think about like as I invest in parents, like these parents um, they just know, just like the teeth analogy, we're investing that they won't get cavities later mm-hmm. on in life. Mm-hmm. You know, it sounds silly, but right now we're, we're doing these things because we know that this is the person they're going to be. And so yeah. teaching yeah. them why we're saying no is more important than saying no in the moment because we want to teach them why they yeah. do that. Sure, that's great. Um, yes, right over here. Let me come to you so, so the people on the recording can sure. hear this as well. Um, well, I have four girls, and we really try to, like, prioritize things that are eternal. And I think especially in our culture right now, where there's such a, I mean, whether it's athletics or having your kid, you know, education, there are just things that are, we just put up as gods. Mm. And um, we've just had, we've just been so intentional of the things that we're putting the most time and effort are eternal things yep. and yep. not temporary things. That's great. Yeah. Prioritization, prioritization on the eternal rather than temporary. Great. Other, th- other thoughts? And then we'll... Yeah, uh, I would say in, in, in part reaction to your comments here about, you know, they are becoming something. That, this is, that is very true. We want to set them up for the very best successful life. They bu- sent them on that abundant life that Jesus talks about. We have a, as a parent, and you can communicate that, you would, I anticipate that you guys would then be going from here to look for ways to, help guide the parents that you have influence over for their kids. Um, we have that, in, that necessity to make sure that they are headed towards that abundant life. Let's not forget that peace for a 47-year-old is the same for a 7-year-old. And if they need someone to speak some truth over their life, it's not just for uh, down the road. And I, I don't want to disagree with what you're saying because I absolutely agree with it. Um, but um, um, let's not let's not forsake the nowness of the kids and the children and, and who they are now, only having in mind what they can or will become later on. Um, great, you guys. Well, thanks for being here. To, oh, yeah, one, yes. One quick closing question. Um, one of the 
once you guys got got this all, you typed it up, said, great, mm -hmm. all right. How did you communicate this sure. to parents? Yeah, we've done it multiple different ways. Um, we've done a class before, a five week, maybe a six week class, uh, an introductory week. Yeah, it was a six week, yeah. Uh, six week introductory thing and then one week given to each one. We have included them, and this is the more ongoing thing. We, uh, when we were creating take home activity cards, um, there was one side was for the parent, the other side took the lesson that we had just done for the weekend. Um, it was the same lesson that they would have done upstairs in the adult world, but then um, uh, the kids' version of it, right? And then the back side of that was the application of one of these principles through this lesson. So we did a lot of we do we do a lot of writing. Like, what is the what that lesson big idea is? What's the main idea there? And then how that can be applied via one of these principles. So you're connecting whatever they're learning on Sunday. You're connecting the dots back to one of these five things. Yes. Um, yeah, we're, we're giving the parent uh, I, ideas on how one of these principles, again, they're very broad and they're meant to be generic so that they can, be, they can fit many different family situations and scenarios. And also they can fit many different Bible lessons and, and stories. Um, it sounds very strategic, like we plan it that way. It just, ha you know, it just kind of fell into place like that. Like, oh, let's make them broad. No, it was, thank you, Jesus, right? Um, so, yeah, we, we, we have them show, they, they show up. Uh, then it's, Those are the two main things that we've done. Um, um, we used to, at a, in a time, we had uh, highlighted them on Twitter, on, you know, hoping parents are, looking at it that way and those would would have gone to Facebook as well we haven't done that in uh, a little while though all right does that help Eric yeah, thank you. yeah well thank you guys I think we have lunch yet uh, next is that right all right fantastic thank you see you